So I'm building a Grom chopper bobber thing, and to do that, I've got to strip this Grom down to its frame. And today, we're getting the wiring harness off of this thing. The first step's gonna be removing the battery. Take off this exhaust too, which basically there's an exhaust hanger right there. So this bolt right there. On the other side of that, there's an Allen head, which is this guy right there. There's a little subframe cover. And then now we start to get into the good stuff. Here's your little ECU or ECM for the engine. It runs everything, it runs your fuel injectors, etc. Here's your fuse panel for the entire bike. There's three fuses. All right, and then over on the right hand side of the bike, I've got this thing, this weird box. And this is some sort of aftermarket taillight maneuver. And then it goes into, this is the stock taillight connector right here. And I can tell because of the, it's got four wires going in there. And each of these wires are the stock wiring color. There's a blue, a yellow, a green, and an orange. And then those are supposed to go all the way back to the taillight up here. This guy should have the same colors on it back there. Also over here we have the starter relay is underneath this plastic cover here, this rubber cover. And then over here we've got the regulator rectifier, this guy right there. Oh, and then we've also got, this guy right here is our ignition coil. All right, so now on the left hand side of the bike, we've got, this is a purge control valve, solenoid valve right here. This is an electrical connection there going in to the valve. And then we've got the EVAP canister right there. You've got your ECM right here. Over on the right hand side, this little red cap thing, this is the DLC. All right, so now I'm gonna take out the fuel tank. There's a couple bolts right there. Then we got this bolt right here. All right, then over on this side, we've got the actual fuel line, which is this guy right here. This comes in and plugs in right there. We've got to disconnect that plug. And then we've also got an electrical connection right here as well. All right, I'm disconnecting the electrical connector right here. I'll pull it out from this little holder first and press down the tab. Slide that off. To get that plug, I've got some bent nose pliers here and should be able to get in here and wreak some havoc with these things. All right, now once we get this little clip here, this sort of sub clip, pull that down. All right, now we gotta get up in here and sort of poke these two other little clip aspects apart. There we go, finally. Now we've got this one drain tube going down to the evap canister there. So it's this guy down here that we want. You can see there's a little clip on there. Go ahead and unclip that. There's that. All right, now fuel tanks should come off. Boom. You can see underneath the fuel tank, this is, was the connection to the fuel pump right here, this guy. All right, so I'm gonna take the stock air filter housing off next, this, this big old chunker thing right there. So there's a bolt right here and an equal bolt on the other side there. Then attached to this, we've got this little drain hose here on the bottom. Pull that off. Then on the other side, we've got this electrical connection to like the map sensor right there, or the airflow sensor. I'm gonna push and pull that off. And now, the little housing is free. All right, I've gone ahead, I've disconnected this purge solenoid here. Where is that guy? So yeah, that's that guy right there, disconnected that labeled it, go on ahead and start labeling all the things I'm disconnecting on here. And then now over here, we've also got, this is our throttle body right here. This is our fuel injector right here. This guy, 
you can see below that this here is a fuel injector above that this connection right here is the actual fuel line coming in and then these two over here are throttle position sensors let's connect both of those as well and there you have it all right and then down here this is on the left hand side of the bike below the cylinder head we've got the engine temperature center it's this guy right here looks like i gotta take that off and make my life a lot easier to do that way Now we have access to the little clip, the connector here, and we should be able to depress that and pull that off like so. All right, now we've got this purge solenoid right here. I'm gonna remove that. There's two Phillips head screws on this thing. And then we're gonna remove the EVAP canister itself. There's basically a big rubber band thing holding this thing on. So if I push that rubber band stuff up a little bit, should sort of peel off. Just like that. All right, and then going from this purge solenoid here, we've got a line that runs to the throttle body over here. And disconnect that and label that. All right, and then the other two lines on these EVAP canister, these guys, they just sort of run. This one doesn't run very far. This one runs down and all the way down and exits on the bottom of the bike. So we can just pull that back through here. There, and that's our EVAP canister is out. All right, now I'm continuing to remove the wiring harness from the bike. And so we've got our ECM right here. This thing again is held on by this little rubber sort of holder. Can wiggle that off of the bike. That's free now. Now we've got a little connector right there. Let's see if I can pull that off of there. Box here from our little seat release. There's a bolt back in there. Take that off. This thing should come off of there. All right, now next we've got our bank angle sensor, which is on this bike right here, this little guy. So this sensor, basically, it turns the bike off if the bike flips over. So if you have an accident or whatever, you end up on the ground, this should turn the engine off. And a little connector to that pops right off. You can see, you can also see in here next to the bank angle sensor, we've got a grounding point for like the wiring harness, all these ground wires coming into this one spot on the frame. All right, so next I want to get to this cover and get this thing off of here. In order to do that, I need to take the rear set here off. So we'll do that first. There's a couple bolts, these two right here. That's the swing arm bolt right there. I'll be. I will be. All right, so I'm gonna leave the swing arm bolt in for right now. And this should be able to twist out of this way enough that I can get this thing out of here, I'm hoping. There we go. All right, coming to the other side of the bike, we've got some electrical connector stuff right here that is zip tied onto the frame. I'm gonna go ahead and remove those zip ties. Pull out all this stuff for the battery and the fuse panel. Got another zip tie thing down here. This guy over here. Is again held on with a little rubber connector holder thing. Slide that off. This is the starter relay. All right, so we got all these grounds for this wire harness grounding to the frame right here by one bolt. Go ahead and remove that bolt. All right, and then we've got our regular rectifier. This guy right here behind the rear brake fluid reservoir here. So I'm going to remove this guy. Disconnect that. Now we have access to the regular rectifier. I'll disconnect that as well. There's two bolts on that. All right, now we've got the ignition coil right here. There's two bolts holding that on. All right, then up front here on the right hand side, we've got this electrical wire coming up here to the oxygen sensor. And this is held on by a bolt right there. There's a little like guard there, and then this should just pop right off. Uh, I basically got everything disconnected on both sides of the engine, and we got this one transverse that goes through between the engine and the frame right here. And you can't really slide either end out. 
And we also still have one connection going to the starter, which is this guy right here. And so in order to get that down or to get this wiring out, I'm going to disconnect the engine right here. There's an engine mount right here. One bolt holding it up. I feel like I should be able to disconnect that and possibly rotate the engine down. I'm not sure how many other bolts are holding this thing on. Maybe there's a bolt there as well. Before I start moving the engine down, I want to remove the exhaust. I'm going to start up here on the cylinder head. There's a couple bolts on the bottom there. So we've got our exhaust flange down here and a couple bolts holding that on. Let's see if we can get those off. There's the exhaust flange out. All right, so back here underneath, we've got a bolt back right there. This is the bolt we need to get this thing off. So with a skinnier socket, I'm able to get in here and get this starter motor. So what I'm looking at here, there's a bolt right there. And there's another one right back in here. All right, starter is out. I've got a bolt holding that on. Almost everything on this bike is like 10 millimeter bolt, 10 millimeter nut. Quick loose this bolt for the engine bolt, basically. Breaker bar works every time. All right, so that is an engine mount bolt for a Honda Grom. So next time we're going to continue to tear this bike down, we're going to take the engine out, we're going to take the rear wheel off, and we're going to work our way towards setting it up on our frame jig so that we can build a new frame for this thing, a mini chopper Grom frame. And so if you like rad motorcycles, subscribe to the channel and watch this build series. And hopefully the build series is also going to inspire others to build their own cool motorcycles. So keep on wrenching everybody, we'll see you next time.